Well, hi there. I am Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist. Born male became female. Go figure. Anyway, laws pertaining to trans folk. My goodness, laws pertaining to trans folk. We're going to discuss laws pertaining to trans folk. My guest is someone you see on the show many times. Her name is Julie Gray Owens. She is a transgender activist and she has just founded a new group, mm -hmm. which she's going to tell us about. My guest, Ms. Julie Gray Owens. Hi, thank Hi. you for uh, having me. My pleasure. My hair is a mess. Okay, I can see it on the monitor. But anyway, you were saying. I wasn't, but that's okay. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, you founded a new group. Yes, uh, Gender Equality in New York. Um, we've been working on it now for a couple of years. But uh, this past spring, we finally got uh, our IR IRS designation as a 501c3. So mm -hmm. we're in the process of you know, putting our website together and doing some other things. And in the meantime, we're uh, doing a program of education uh, across the state, uh, doing transgender forums, um, all upstate as well as uh, Long Island. And now, people often say, but if you've done a town, you've done a town. Why would you keep going back to that town? Right. Well, um, a couple of things. First of all, our mission is to try to make sure that uh, the general public has a better understanding of the transgender, non-binary, and intersex communities. Um, and we believe that if we get people in a room and we mm -hmm. uh, give them information, uh, you know, concepts, definitions, words to use, and so forth, uh, and then have panelists talk about their personal stories, uh, that we can win over people, uh, change people's attitudes, and uh, gain allies. Uh, and also make people aware of the fact that we are going to be a presence here in New York State. So that's our Excuse work. Excuse me, we, your organization, or we, the transgender We, community? the community. Okay. We, the community. And so um, every opportunity that we have, whether it's at a church, whether it's at a library, mm -hmm. a political group, uh, a college, it really doesn't mm -hmm. matter, uh, brings us uh, into uh, a new audience. Uh, which needs to have that training, that understanding of concepts and so forth. So, uh, for example, uh, last night uh, we did one uh, in uh, a library locally on Long Island, and uh, Sunday we'll be doing one at a church. Also on Long Island? Yes, for right now it is, but um, we've been doing them up in Buffalo, we've done Buffalo State, we've been in um, uh, Plattsburgh, uh, Syracuse, Auburn, Oneonta, mm -hmm. uh, so we've been as much as we can all around the state. Oneonta, wasn't that where they founded uh, something amazing? Wasn't it once a utopian community or something? I'm not really sure, but there's a lot, lot of things going on in Oneonta, um, and it's very close to Cooperstown as well. Uh, but there's a SUNY there, uh, and we've had uh, good support there. We've had good support up in Auburn. Um, Jamestown, we've been in Jamestown. Lucille so, Ball's yeah, old exactly, Netherlands, exactly, yes. exactly. So um, we continue to do the work. Uh, and get the word out. And again, like I say, we it gives us an opportunity to organize as well uh, because there are a lot of community members that come out to the forums. Uh, we get their email address so that that makes it easier for us to, for example, if we wanted to make people aware of the fact that maybe letters should be written or something like that, mm -hmm. we certainly can put the word out and, and make sure that uh, letters get written. How difficult is it to be trans in a small town? Well. Um, being on Long Island, I don't have that problem, but I can tell you that the stories that we hear are extremely tough. Um, first of all, being upstate is like going, you know, south, you know, the south part of the state, you know, New York City, it's you know, and so yeah. forth. We're very much uh, advanced as far as knowledge about our community and but LGBT upstate rights. But basically middle America. So. Right, and, uh, and I would say that they're probably 10 years behind. Um, not for any other reason other than the message hasn't radiated out far enough mm -hmm. yet. Um, and their politics tend to be a little more conservative. Do they bash trans folk? Do they insult them in the streets? Um, it's probably not as bad as that, but it's still not you know, super friendly and everyone feels very comfortable. It's not like that at all. And one of the problems is, is that, for example, employment up there is usually done by um, small businesses. So, you know, instead of having a corporation and a uh, corporate policy and, and so forth. And lawsuits and all that. Well, whatever. Yeah. Um, but but uh, I think a lot of corporations, especially in New York City uh, and Long Island, are trying to do the right thing, trying mm -hmm. to train their people and be aware. But if it's, uh, you know, John's uh, la land, well, landscaping or something like yeah. that, you know, you're really, 
you know, uh, you may at be the mercy one of, of John, exactly, exactly, who may or may not be merciful. Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So we do hear a lot of a lot of stressful stories. How do people live on public assistance or something? Um, yes, or you know, family, or just trying to make ends meet by whatever jobs they can put together. I mean, um, it is tough, but we are seeing uh, you know growth. Like for example, when we first went up to Oneonta back in 2016, there was nothing. There was no gay bars, there was no uh, support systems, no services or anything like that. Um, Oneonta now uh, has a transgender health care center. Wonderful. Um, they are also um, in a, uh, a group of LGBT activists have now put together, uh, you know, like a pride organization. Well, now let me ask you something. If that uh, LGBT health center, LGBTQ... It's actually a trans health center. Trans but, health yeah. center is in Oneonta, is mm -hmm. it called? Does that mean that people from surrounding towns go to that one because it's the only one there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, people travel hours to get there. Yeah. You know, it's that type of situation. But it's a wonderful um, sure. step in the right direction uh, for upstate. And of course, you know, Albany is very nice and, and safe, and Rochester is very wonderful. And so, uh, you know, those Buffalo, again, same thing. But what happens is outside the city, the little towns. The sure. little towns. And, and it's really amazing when you get upstate. You know, we think of, uh, you know, outside of New York City, well, that's Queens. You know, it's pretty built up in a lot of right. people. But you get outside of, for example, Syracuse, and it's farm country. There's sure. just nothing out there. So um, it makes it hard. But, you know, um, I do believe that across the state, especially with the Gender Expression Non-Discrimination uh, Act agenda passing, mm -hmm. um, that's a big thing. Um, Have you ever been afraid for your own safety? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Uh, and that's probably because of the fact that I still have a, um, a brain that is, uh, you know, based on uh, having spent most of my life as a cisgender heterosexual male right. uh, and having a certain degree of confidence that I can just go anywhere and do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and that probably someday will get me into trouble. No, but, you know, trouble. but... Um, Does your wife go with you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, she's she's absolutely wonderful. think that mitigates they say, well, she's not that bad. I mean... She used to be a guy, but look, she's married to a woman, so that's okay. I don't know if that's it or not. I think um, another privilege that I have Just is... Just a is guy who likes a, wearing a dress. What's well, the problem? Um, another part of it, I think, is, a, is I am able to pass. Um, and, and that's quite a privilege. Beautifully, yes. Well, but the point is, is that a lot of times, well, a lot of times they just think of us as probably the two crazy lesbians or something, yeah. you know, off to the side and pretty much leave us alone. So I don't really worry about that. I mean, we don't go out of our way to like, you know, wave flags and drive trans. people crazy. Hi, yeah. <laughs> want to see it here? Let me lift up my. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, um, but it's good. It's good, and it's an opportunity. I mean, my wife has become an amazing activist, um, mm -hmm. and and helps me with so many things. Whether it's the mailing list, or um, she's a professional editor, so a lot of Wonderful, my speeches yeah. and things get, you know, get looked over. Mm -hmm. um, and it's made me a better writer because of. You sure. know, her or looking over my shoulder. Editor, you know, yeah. exactly, exactly. That's not too long. So that that makes it really great. Um, and of course, uh, you know, my home life is very supportive, which isn't hasn't always been the case, and isn't always the case for any transgender activist. With your or, previous you know, wife, it was not. Uh, not as good as it could have been, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why I'm no longer with her. There so, you go. You know, I mean, that happens. But um, you know, again, uh, being happily married to someone who's supportive uh, and is concerned about the work that we're doing and wants to make sure that things go in the right direction, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good thing. Let me ask you something. Your name, Julie Gray Owens, is that your second wife's surname and yours combined? That's correct. That's correct. Who's who? She's Gray. I'm Owens. There you go. <laughs> He's Dickens. I'm Right, Prince exactly. Yeah. But, but the thing was is that, uh, you know, when I first thought about putting it together, I was like, oh, yes, I love it, this. It this sounds is, great. This is, yeah. this is me, you know, great. Julie Gray Owens. It sounds like, to me, it sounds like some kind of expedition or something. Well, that, there you, you know, go. Yeah. But anyway, Lewis and Clark, no, yeah. Cray Owens. Cray Owens, exactly. Uh, but, um, okay, now we were going to discuss this law. What are we, what law is that? Well, we're talking about legislation because it's not a law yet. It's called the Equality Act, mm -hmm. and it's a federal uh, piece of legislation. Um, and what it would do is it would update the 1964 Civil Rights Bill yes. uh, to add in uh, information and coverage for the LGBTQIA me, community. I always thought we were covered under that, but apparently not. Oh, no, we're not. Not not by any sense of the imagination. I mean, like in 1968 when I was 12, I thought we were covered. Well, it's that. funny, and, and funny you say that. In my notes here somewhere, and I think we can find it very quickly, it's amazing that uh, basically some of the um, uh, 
phone call, uh, you know, where they, they find out whether people are aware of certain things. 70% mm -hmm. of the Americans don't, don't realize that uh, the LGBT community does not have a federal law protecting them. Mm. Uh, so it's really bad. Now, here in New York State, we're very lucky mm -hmm. to have a progressive state that just finally, after 16 years, passed uh, the transgender civil rights bill. Who was mainly responsible for that? Um, you. Well, no, 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 no. But I would say, um, obviously, the governor was 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 impactful. Yes, and um, he was and wonderful. And our sponsors were wonderful. But you certainly did so much work for that. Well, thank you. Um, and also, to be perfectly blunt, the election had a lot to do with it. Um, getting the Senate flipped from uh, Republican to Democrat made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, in, in my mind, it just underlines the need for all of our members of our community. And if you're out there, please listen to this. We have to register and we have to vote. Um, if we don't do that, we will never get the kind of assistance, cooperation, and support uh, that we need to make sure that we get bills passed that will protect our community and um, also, for that matter, give uh, funds to our community that will help build, you know, community centers and, and things of that nature. Yeah. So and like that health center we were discussing Absolutely earlier. right. So, yeah. so um, it's very important for all of our community members to get out, um, register, and then make sure that they vote. Now, a lot of people will say to me, well, you know, for example, 2019, that's not even a state election. That's just local. Well, let me tell you. One of the things that I've learned from doing this for a long mm -hmm. time is that what ends up happening is like, like a small town council, um, someone gets elected on a small town council and they do pretty good and people get to know them mm -hmm. and then the next thing you know, mm -hmm. they're running for state assembly. Tom Duane, a senator in New York, started as a city council member, ultimately he became a senator. Uh, and carried the bill for marriage equality. Yes, and uh, Brad Hoylman started as a city council member became a senator, indeed I believe replaced Tom Duane. Exactly, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are always a part of the election system mm -hmm. and we are always doing whatever we can to support candidates that support us and make sure that they get elected because they may be moving up the ladder. And um, the same can be said for our opponents. Um, if they get elected into a town council and then move into assembly and then move up to the state and then, you know, further on perhaps down the road. What makes me heart sick is when trans folks say, well, I live outside the system, the system has nothing for me, the system hates me. I say change the system. Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see. That's so true. You well, know? you're right on target there. And I, and I think the thing is, is that um, there is a, uh, a, a strong group of advocates across this state um, that are doing what they can. Now, it's all, not always easy, and we're not as large as we'd like to be, um, but there is a lot of work being done, even right now, in discussing, you know, for example, in 2020, the next legislative session, what bills are we going to be aggressively pushing for? What are you know? we going to be aggressive? Well, there's a whole bunch of different things that we're talking about. I mean, one thing is, how about some prison reform for transgender uh, people who are incarcerated. If we were arrested, would we go to a men's prison or a women's prison? It depends. It depends where we're at. It depends whether that locality or that jail or that prison has, uh, you know, follows certain rules or regulations. So, and again, guess who's making the rules? The people at the council level or the assembly yes. level or the senate level or whatever. Um, so it's, and if I'm not mistaken, many of the areas have sheriffs that have to be elected and are the ones who are put in charge of the j local jails. And that can go either way, like that sheriff in Arizona who was absolutely, so brutal. Absolutely, absolutely. So again, it's the need for voting and so forth. So register and vote, for God's sake, for your own sake. And for our community. Yes. Absolutely. Now the law, what does this law do for us? Well, the Equality Act, um, just so that you know, um, would do a couple of different things. First of all, it updates definitions. It hasn't been passed. No, it's been passed in the House of Representatives. Uh, that happened uh, back on May 17th. Uh, the nice thing to hear about it was that, uh, let's see if I can find it. it uh, the vote carried with 236 votes for it, 173 against it, eight Republicans voted in favor of it, and no Democrats opposed it. Well, so um, the bill passed. Now, the problem is it's got to go to the Senate. Uh, unfortunately, the Senate currently has a Republican majority. Mm -hmm. um, it will never even get in the door. 
that's just not going to happen. But as we did with gender, it prepares the terrain, it normalizes what we Absolutely want, et cetera, right. et cetera. And it informs people. Because again, the moment that this bill was uh, passed in the House of Representatives, what ended up happening was, is newspaper articles shot the information out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, somebody reading their newspaper, you know, at the dinner table or, or you know, in, in the, the morning, breakfast table, yeah. whatever, whatever it is, or, or for that matter, um, you, on know, the on their, on, on their, you know, on their, oh, right, yes. you know, doing it on their, their pad or their phone or whatever, reads about this and goes, well, what's all this about? And then finds out that, you know, for example, uh, LGBT people don't have civil rights, basically. And any in, decent in, in, in the United person States. would say, well, no, that's a shame. That's not right. These exactly. People aren't hurting anyone. Well, we have, as, as they always say, we have a strong base of allies. We have a strong base of opponents. And we have a large area of people who have no idea what's going on yeah. and can be swayed in either direction. Mm -hmm. And our job is to do the swaying. Right. And that's one of the reasons back why we go to do our forums across the state. Um, we find that what happens is it's like a pebble in a pond, you know, how it like the, the rings the circle effect, out. Yes. And what happens is, is that someone will come to our forum and then maybe they'll have lunch with someone the next day and they'll say, oh, you'll, you'll never guess, you know, what I did last night. You know, I, I uh, went to this transgender forum and I didn't know anything about it and oh my God, you know, like blah, 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 blah. So that person is now. And the guys were better now. looking than women. It was crazy. You know? Well, that actually happens sometimes, yeah, you know. know. But that does happen. But Sorry, ladies. Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> but back to the uh, Equality Act. One of the things it would do is, for example, make sure that we define the term sex to include uh, sex stereotypes, sexual orientation, gender identity, pregnancy, childbirth, um, and intersex traits, which I think is wonderful. So that's all a part of that. But there are very few, it's like 2% of the population. Right, well, what's our population of the transgender community? It's I about six tenths of a percent, actually. Are we fewer than intersex? From what so far researchers are saying, yes. Oh my God. So I, I, I think that those numbers are going to change by the number of people who are coming out as non-binary. Yeah. If we include non-binary as we, part we of the transgender. To. Well, I'm saying uh, under the umbrella. Yeah. Not, not in the respect of making sure that they're covered or something like that. Have you that. noticed that it's mostly women who choose to be non-binary? I'm seeing it on every side. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I just, I just Maybe think that it's a, it's a, um, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but it's almost like a tsunami of, um, we do a lot of work in, in educating schools. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, there are trans children coming out, but I would say that probably that number may be double or triple coming out as non-binary. Isn't that great? Yes. I think it's wonderful. I think it, it breaks down all the rules uh, in our society. I mean, in 20 years time, this is going to be a different world. And you think I should let my hair grow? Yes, I do. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but, and I listen to her fashion. Look how beautiful she is, how elegant. <laughs> anyway, this sow's ear is <laughs> not interested in being a silk purse. Polyester, maybe, you know, polyester velvet, you know, washable. It's great. Right, right. Anyway, so, um, okay. Continuing on, yes. gender identity would obviously now, obviously now be a protected class, um, and that includes, you know, gender-related identity, wouldn't appearance. But just being a, a, a person, like if someone, all right, when you were a guy, if someone, a total stranger, came up and just punched you in the face just because he felt like it, you're under arrest, Buster. Mm -hmm. If they do it to you as a woman, I mean. You're a person. Never mind what you're wearing. Never mind how you identify. Well, it would really we, we really have to get back to why did he punch me, and if and if he punched me because he was drunk and it was a bar brawl, that's one thing. Um, if he punched me because, hey tranny, mm. now we have a situation where that's a hate crime, and it's discrimination because I happen to be transgender. Yeah. So there's a it depends on the situation. Um, How about verbal abuse? Is that a crime? Um, I'm not. A, I don't think that that's a part of this. That might even be considered free speech. Um, I think you have to. I think you have you? to. Well, I think you have to talk about what they're what they've said and so forth. I mean, there's there's How obviously. What if someone laughs at you? Yeah, I, I think you'd have a hard time taking them to court for that. Okay. You know. However, if for example you were in a medical office, and someone continued to misgender you. You could sue the sue the organization. Good. So That's I mean, good to know. it depends. Or you go to a drugstore to get your hormones, and yes, sir, we'll have it right now, sir. Right. 
which actually happened to me at a Dwayne Reed many years right. ago. Right. But unfortunately, during that period of time, I don't know whether it was no, during No, it was the, like 20 years ago. Exactly. So there was no coverage no for coverage. you. And it was like put up and shut up. No, I just left. I said, never mind. Thank you. Goodbye. Right. But you didn't get your hormones or whatever it was that well, you needed that time. Well, I went to a different time. drugstore. Well. CVS, I hear you call. Yeah, right. <laughs> but again, some people, if we're talking about upstate, that may be the only drugstore exactly. in the town. Exactly. Yeah, and so the pharmacists knew their... Went to high school with their uh, parents. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. So let's now, not what's a nice that. boy like you? Come on, straighten yourself out. Right. That kind of right. Thing. I'm sure. I'm sure that would go in. So anyway, um, so the the Equality Act would give uh, finally uh, give states, you know, people in states like Mississippi, the same rights that we pretty much enjoy here in New York well, State. Well, technically, legally, it's a starting point. Yes. I mean, Many officers in this city don't know that they're I, not I'm, supposed to yeah, I, All we can do legislatively is start the process. Mm -hmm. um, we have to change society, and that's not going to be done by passing a law. Mm -hmm. And that, again, brings us to why we are doing the forums. We need to change the public's perception of who we are. We're not dangerous. We are actually your neighbor, your uncle, your mom, your dad, your child, your classmate, your friends. I mean, that's who we are. Your beauty advisor, anyway. Right, yes. exactly. So that uh, that covers it that way. No jokes coming. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, it also uh, has um, increased the coverage from a standpoint of who can who who can be um, uh, sued, if you will. Um, so now we're talking about good services and programs, which include stores, shopping centers, online retailers, even if they don't have a brick isn't building. That isn't that interesting? Service providers, salons, banks, gas stations, food banks, service or care centers, shelters, travel agency, funeral parlors, health care, accounting, and legal services, transportation services. Um, it prohibits the establishment from being construed to be limited to just a physical uh, facility. Which so especially online, uh, online uh, takes yeah. care of that issue. Um, so that's how would they discriminate against you online? I, I don't know, but it covers it. So I yeah. guess that's the nice thing. That's the nice thing. So that just gives you a little bit of background on it. Um, it also does some changing of, of uh, it, it codifies sexual orientation and gender identity as protected classes in the Fair Housing Act, Equal Credit, Opportunity Act. Yes, that would um, be wonderful. So all Throughout of those the things, country, absolutely, yes. absolutely. Um, what's interesting is, and I, I really like this part, um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, it's all about the religious um, well, they're using that against us. Exactly. Religious nice freedom, like those bakers who refused to take for the gay The act squarely addresses two of the major questions associated with anti-LGBT bias today. Discriminatory religious refusals and facilitates access for transgender people. The bill declares that the Religious Freedom Restoration Act cannot serve as a defense to enforcement actions under the Civil Rights Act. What that means is, is you discriminate against me, I go after you and sue you, and you can't use this uh, sure, religious like freedom saying, restoration. Well, if you don't like women, you can have a religion that says women are unclean, and then you don't have to serve them. And exactly. no, that doesn't work. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and that's a big issue for us right now because uh, religious leaders, conservative religious leaders, obviously not liberal uh, religious leaders, um, are doing whatever they can to uh, pound our community down, basically. Um, Which is a good thing because... That means we're getting strong and powerful, and they're getting nervous. Well, I had an opportunity to uh, to go on one of the lines to just uh, get an idea to see what they are saying about the negatives about the Equality Act, and uh, you know, wording like we only have three the minutes. well, make it fast. Mm -hmm. The Equality Act would further inequality by penalizing everyday Americans for their beliefs about marriage and biological sex. Heavens. So, it would force employers and workers to conform to new sexual norms. Um, so, it's, it's, uh, oh, no, it's pretty bad. Oh, no, not new sexual norms. Ne new I'm sexual. not used to oh, the old ones, damn Citizens it. would be punished for their views on biological sex. Punished? Punished. punished. My goodness. How um, would they be punished? It's got a chilling effect. They discourage people from opening new businesses or entering in certain fields. Yes, okay, all trans women only allowed to work in beauty salons. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically what it is now anyway. But well, yeah. we have a lot of work to do. Yes, but anyway, okay, now, 
what do we do? How do we get this passed? Well, I think, first of all, we get educated. Um, so if, if you're watching this and you now have some questions, and obviously I didn't, I just scratched the surface, you know, please Google the Equality Act and learn about it. Uh, then, if you would like, um, although we have two states, uh, two um, uh, senators, uh, uh, Chuck and uh, Gillibrand, that um, are already supportive, but it always helps to write them a note, send them an email, give them a call. Yes. If you happen to be in the area, drop by the office yes. and tell them how important the Equality Act is to you. Um, we also have Congress people that need, to, that need to know, and if they were ones that supported the bill, and that would be any Democrats and perhaps one or two Republicans mm -hmm. from New York, I don't know the, the complete listing, uh, it would be nice to send them a little thank you note. Now, can, uh, how can people contact you? Your new group is? Let me do that right now. I was prepared for that, if I can get it out. Um, we are right now have a Facebook page. You can certainly write to us at... www.facebook.com. Gender Equality New York. Exactly. I shouldn't have let I should have let you read it. No, it's fine. I actually liked it this way. Okay. So good. So anyway, so that's what you should do. Now you read it. Tell them how Okay, well again <laughs> repeating www.facebook.com slash gender equality ny slash. And no matter where they live, in Mississippi or Doesn't Baltimore matter. or wherever. Yeah. You'll, California, you'll tell them about the Equality, Equality Act. Act. If that's what they need, we're happy to do it. Okay, and there you go. And you really should, because it's for all of us, and really, I mean, haven't we been kept down long enough? For God's sake, enough. You know, we are human. We deserve rights, just as everyone else does. And this has been the latest edition of Pose. No, <laughs> anyway, but a uh, great series. You should watch it. Pose, you know, mm -hmm. I love it. Ryan Murphy. Anyway, um, okay, my guest has been Ms. Julie Gray Owens, who is the founder of Gender Equality New York, right? Exactly. And is a great advocate for transgender rights. And uh, is just, where would we be without her? I mean, she does wonderful things here in New York. And as New York, so goes the world. And now she's involved in the, gen in the uh, you know, national struggle with gender equality. And there you go. Anyway, my guest has been Ms. Julie Gray Owens, transgender activist. I'm Diana Monfort. This has been the Diana Monfort Show. Hey, even if no one else loves you, I love you and love yourself. And Julie loves you. We love you. Bye. See you.